Hi, it's Deanna, and uh, today I'm going to show you um, how not to get screwed. And when I say screwed, sorry, I'm a New Yorker, so we're pretty blunt. Okay, so here's an example of a box that's made out of porcelain that you might say, wow, that's a 19th century Limoges or Meissen or some kind of German or French porcelain box, hand painted with metal um, hinges and you know, and uh, pieces um, of ornate beauty going around it. And you might say, oh my goodness, I have to have that. And you may plunk down, I don't know, $50, $75, $100, $200, $100, and uh, think you have yourself a treasure. When in reality, you have yourself a piece of garbage. Sorry. Again, I told you I was blunt. So uh, here's how uh, not to get screwed. So when you find an object in a thrift shop, a, an estate sale, a garage sale, a secondhand store, um, antique uh, mall, or what have you, keep your eye out for something and it's called the maker's mark. So for example, this one just told me a tale and with a little Googling and might I add, Google is your friend. Um, I was able to find out that ISCO is a mid-century, maybe 1950s, 1960s export company that exported things from Hong Kong and sold it to, you know, like decorator stores, stores that you bought home furnishings and things for your house. Um, but now, a lot of times, unfortunately, you can get duped. And I get duped every single month, year, whatever it happens to me. So, uh, for example, if this company, ISCO, wasn't kind enough to place their uh, mark on this box, a lot of companies just sometimes just had paper labels that was stuck to the bottom. And if it didn't have that mark and just a paper label, that paper label would most likely be gone by now and there would be no mark on the bottom. And you would say, oh my goodness, this is a Victorian uh, 19th century box or maybe earlier because the metal does have patina on it and age and wear. And you'd, you'd think to yourself that this is an old, an old piece. And, you, and you'd plunk down all this money, you'd get home, and you might never know, or you might find out five years later that you've been taken. And, uh, you know, not all antique dealers or um, collectors can be experts on everything. And some things can deceive. Now, thank goodness that I only paid like $5 for this box because I just thought it was cute to throw some trinkets in. And yeah, it has some damage. But, um, yeah, I... Uh, Anyone can uh, get, get screwed over and get deceived or just not know. And uh, antique dealers all the time. It happens to them. I see a lot of antique dealers selling things that are replicas, are fakes. And they're not meaning to deceive anyone. They just got fooled or just don't know for sure. So uh, I'm going to show you this box. Now, a big problem out there um, is that now, not bad mouthing the Chinese, but a lot of um, Chinese factories are making a lot of things and you know a lot of antique objects, um, and making them really, really, really look old. Um, they're doing them very well, and there's a lot of fakes on the market, and uh, they're flooded. The market is flooded with a lot of uh, antique replicas and fakes, and a lot of times now, um, prior to I believe 1897. Things didn't have to be marked. They didn't even have to have the country of origin on them. It was uh, the McKin uh, McKinley uh, tax uh, tariff, I believe, and all people uh, selling things uh, to the U.S. and the U.S. had to have marks on them, countries of origin. Um, and uh, so now if you find something and you don't see a mark on it, you assume immediately, oh, it's prior to 1897, uh, prior to the McKinley uh, Tariff Act. And you would think, oh, okay, I'm safe. This thing is uh, the real deal. It's old. Um, it's valuable. And like I said earlier, if they didn't fire this into the porcelain and it just had a paper label, that paper label would be long gone. And you would think this is a 1897 or before um, piece of porcelain. And uh, instead of uh, having this wonderful $200 um, Limoges box, you have a pile of junk that was, you know, mass produced, made by the hundreds of thousands or uh, tens of thousands 
um, in the 1950s or 60s in Hong Kong, China, Japan, Taiwan, and uh, you could be having that as uh, one of your centerpieces of your collection, not knowing and thinking uh, you got yourself a wonderful uh, object. And uh, sadly, you may have plunked down a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, fifty bucks, seventy-five bucks, and it's worth a mere five dollars if you're lucky. So just be careful. Keep your eye on on things. Not all antique dealers or antique uh, traders or flea market staff or thrift shops or antique malls know what they have. Not everybody can be an expert on everything, and they can be fooled as well. And not trying to deceive you, sell you a piece as an antique when it's just vintage and uh, mass produced. So uh, remember, Google is your friend. Do your homework. If you're not sure about something, don't buy uh, it if it's over like five or ten dollars. Don't take the chance unless you're sure or unless you're willing to lose uh, a, an enormous sum of money not knowing something. And remember, not all dealers um, know for a hundred percent sure what they have unless they are complete and utter experts. I mean, experts get fooled too. But if um, there's a certain field of collecting that somebody's been collecting for 20, 30, 40 years, after a while, they can tell just by looking at something, um, whether it's fake, um, you know, or if it's the real deal or not. But uh, just, uh, this is just a little uh, cautionary tale. Do your homework. Remember, Google and research is your friend. Um, if you don't see a mark, um, it doesn't mean it's antique. It could uh, be mass produced, had a paper label that fell off. Um, be vigilant, ask questions, do your homework, do research, and if you're not sure and you're not willing to lose a lot of money, um, if something's five or ten dollars, go for it if you like it, but if uh, you would uh, cry and cry hard if you lost fifty to a hundred to two hundred dollars, then don't bother and don't take the chance. So once again, thanks for watching another one of my videos, and if you like what you see, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, I'll enjoy my uh, piece of trash from the 1950s, my junk box, and I'll throw my trinkets in it. And that's all its purpose is for me. And uh, I hope uh, you take heed to what I've told you and happy collecting.